basically I'm going to, I'm part of the uh, Nova School of Science and Technology from Lisbon in Portugal. And I'm here presenting a part of my uh, PhD rec research uh, called uh, Smartphone-Based Papillometer with Chromatic Stimuli to Screener of Tomological Diseases. Um, I'm going, so these are the, the four main sections that I'm going to pass. It's almost like the paper that I submitted. So in a background uh, to understand what it is. So basically, uh, first we need to know what is pupillometry. So pupillometry is the technique that allows the measurement of pupil response to a stimuli. So this stimuli can be light, music, heat. There's a different kind of stimuli that makes our pupil react, contract and dilate according to it. Um, if we measured it in a quantitative way, we can build some graphic that can give us the, res the pupil response to that stimuli. For, for example, here, um, after a, a flashlight, uh, the pupil will start to contract really, really fast. And it's a, a, a work responsible for the parasympathetic autonomic nervous system. And then it will redilate and uh, come back to its baseline size. And it's uh, part of the sympathetic uh, autonomic nervous system. Um, and this is the kind of graphics that we then can uh, interpret and uh, analyze this pupil response. There are some parameters that we can check. For example, in this one, in this uh, graphic, we have just uh, some examples, the peak amplitude, the time that takes to peak, and the time by 75% of pupillary recovery. And are, there are some others that can be um, assessed with this kind of technique. Uh, this technique um, regained a new interest over the last 20 years, more or less, due to the discovery of a novel photopigment, which is called melanopsin. So basically, before uh, the scientists <laughs> and everyone thought that we, the only photoreceptors that we had were the, the cones and rods, but over 20 years ago, they found out that we also have some cells called intrinsically photosensitive retinal ganglion cells, part of the retina that has this new photopigment called melanopsin. The, there's a particularity related to this uh, photopigment, which is its uh, sensitivity to the blue light. So with this discovery, over the last 20 years, a lot of research have, has been done using chromatic pupillometry, which means that we are using uh, blue and red uh, stimuli and to understand the pupil response. And to, uh, with, uh, over these last years, uh, several diseases have been tested and studies have been made uh, with this technique and this chromatic pupillometry, for example, Alzheimer, Parkinson, glaucoma, because we know that these diseases has, have this functional sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system balance. And also some studies have shown that, um, for example, in glaucoma, there's a decrease in the number of these kind of cells, the intrinsically photosensitive retinal ganglion cells, and also they get damaged uh, with the disease. So this leads to an impaired pupil light reflex. So basically, that response of the pupil gets differentiated in people with these diseases. So we, this could be a technique to be used to, to screen this kind of diseases. So basically, if we could early screen and monitor uh, diseases like these ones, we can increase the quality of life and decrease the social economical impact of them. Uh, but the existing pupillometers, they are uh, they usually use uh, for record uh, infrared cameras. They are expensive and they are not portable. And the ones that are more portable, they are really expensive. So it's really uh, difficult to bring this technique to a recording system that could be spread all over the world. However, we have technology that could overcome uh, these, which is uh, smartphones. We all have one. so. It allows video recording, it is low cost, it is mobile, and it, it's accessible everywhere, everyone, everywhere in the world that everyone has a smartphone. So um, this could be really a technology to help uh, building this screening tool. So basically the goal here is to prove that it and validate a smartphone-based system that could work as a pupillometer that could enable and use a viable protocol for 
chromatic pupillometry, and in the final stage that could allow um, neuroophthalmological disease screening. So how are we doing that? Uh, first, we need to build <laughs> a smartphone-based uh, system. So we are developing a smartphone app. Uh, in this case, we are using Android and we are using the rear face camera for video recording and the rear face flash for uh, to allow the stimuli in a certain time that we automate. Um, and we are also using some background light um, into different colors, white and red. I will explain further uh, why we made this. Uh, but the, the main goal is to illuminate the eye so that we can have a good quality of the images and to be able to detect uh, what is the pupil and its size in each uh, frame of the video. So this is an example of an apparatus of the measurements for now. It is still in, a, in, in, a, in an early stage, but basically we put the individual in a chin rest uh, like this one so that it can be stable. And we use a tripod to also stabilize the smartphone and to be able to do the acquisitions. In terms of the chromatic uh, stimuli, we are using standard grade cellophane paper as red and blue filters because it's easy to find, it's, it's, it's cheaper for now. And uh, we measured the, the spectres of the flashlight of the smartphone with those filters and it's according to the state of the art for chromatic pupillometry. So we know that these filters are enough for what you are trying to do. Um, this is part of the acquisition system and then we need to work in some algorithms to get uh, the pupil size detected in, in each frame. So basically the procedure is in each frame of the video. Uh, we detect the eye and then we convert it to grayscale and we apply some pupil detection algorithm and we get the pupil detected and the data that we need to build those kind of graphics that show the pupil response through time. Um, this pupillary data processing and the pupil detection, for now we are having a Python algorithm run in a, in a computer after the acquisition. So for now it's not yet in a real time uh, during like right after the acquisition, we are doing it post acquisition and we are using two different pupil detection algorithms that I'm going to explain now. So the first one, is called PURE, uh, comes from Pupil Reconstructor. It was developed by Tiago Santini and other, uh, other authors. Um, it's open source. And in the really summarized way, I'm just trying to explain it like really, really in a high level. <laughs> so we have an input image. First, they do a pre-processing and detect the, the edges. And then they filter those edges to make them thinner and more uh, able to, to find uh, pupil candidates. They do it through some calculus and they find what they think would be the, the pupil edge. And then they choose, they select the best one according to some criteria such as its roundness, the contrast between um, the iris and the, so the inner side and the outer side of that edge. And, and then they get to the final result. And uh, another thing that it's really good in this in these algorithm is that they also calculate a confidence measure, also according to some, to some conditions uh, related to roundness and to uh, having other candidates around and so. And they do a measurement uh, between zero and one, being one like the best, the best pupil <laughs> and with that we can discard uh, pupils that are not considered good enough to be the, the, the pupil edge. Um, it's also important to, to refer here that this algorithm was built and tested uh, by this group for images acquired with near infrared cameras. So we are doing, we are applying this in a different kind of images because they are acquired in RGB. So this is a, a challenge. So in cases where this confidence measure is low, we are applying a different, um, a different uh, algorithm, a basic one. So it, essentially we do a binarization according to a certain uh, threshold and we apply some morphological applications. We then apply 
a find counters function. We get something like this for this image, for example. We discard all the small ones and all the counters that we know that are not able to be the pupil. And then we apply a meaning closing circle and we get the final result. And this is how we are having uh, the pupil detected in all the frames. Um, and this, the third part of this <laughs> project is the acquisition protocol. So basically, uh, we, we are trying to stimulate those particular cells that I was um, mentioning in the beginning, in the background, those intrinsic photosensitive retinal ganglion cells. So we know that they have a different response for blue light because they are more sensitive, as I said. So the protocol that we are using is represented here. So basically we do some initial adaptation to the light conditions. We then start recording. Um, we record five seconds just to get the baseline size of the pupil. We then uh, show the stimuli for a certain duration. I will explain what durations did we, did we do. Um, and then we wait 30 seconds still recording to uh, be able to get the pupil recovered. And then we stop recording and we do a pause and we repeat the process. Uh, it's every time like this. What were the combinations that we did here? So we did always for red and blue stimuli because we are trying to do a chromatic pupillometry uh, protocol. We also tested different durations, one second, two second, three and 10 seconds of stimuli duration to try to get to, to what we needed and also tested different background colors, so white and red. Um, in order to, we are trying to find a way to, to activate those cells. So this is why we did different testing and we did uh, three times for uh, each scenario. So, okay, um, I think things will be more comprehensible in the results. So first, just to show uh, some examples of the quality of the images that we are getting. So um, these are examples with red and white background lights. And we can see that we have a proper um, contrast between the pupil and the iris. So this is really good. Uh, this is what we want for us to be able to detect the pupil. So here are some examples of the pupil detected through our algorithms. This is just to show that. And now I'm going to show the graphics that we were able to build with the different uh, protocols that we tested, um, always comparing the red and the, in the blue uh, stimuli uh, in the same graph. So, uh, for one second, this is the graph, this, this first, uh, so, sorry, <laughs> uh, the stimulus duration variation we did only with white background because first we were trying to do with the white background light. And this is what we, uh, what we um, the results that we have. So basically one can see that the curves are really similar in terms of the recovery of the pupil. So we are, we are not seeing a, a difference between the red and the blue light uh, pupil light reflex, particularly in the recovery, which is where we know that those cells get uh, their contribution to the pupil light reflex. So, well, this was not what we were expecting. The same thing for the three seconds and the same thing for the 10 seconds. Uh, so we can see that they are almost, the tendency of the curves is the same. and we can see that probably we, we are not being able to activate those cells. Um, so yeah, we see a similarity between the blue and the red curves for all the durations that we tested, even increasing the, the, the stimuli duration was not getting the results that we were expecting. And according to some study that I'm referencing here, uh, this could be um, like a dominance of cones in the pupil light reflex with almost no contribution of rods and melanopsin. So we can, uh, with, this, <laughs> with this protocol, test the cone behavior. Uh, but this is not what we were looking for because we know that we are interested in those particular cells that are uh, more sensitive to the blue light. So we tested with the red background um, and with that, 
we were able we only did it for 10 seconds uh, stimuli and we can see here in the left the, the the graphic for the white background and in the right the graphic for the red background and we can see a small difference between the curves um, and the slower and sustained response for the blue light, which is more likely to, it's more close to what we see in the literature. So, but we only did it with, with three persons, so we need to increase our, our um, sample data. But it can be an indicator of a good way to, to proceed this study. Um, so yeah, this is what I basically have what I've said. Um, so in terms of conclusions, well, we were able to prove and to show that uh, the smartphone has technology sufficient to accomplish a good papillometric results. We see graphics with uh, the same quality of uh, normal and traditional pupillometers. Um, we still need further research and validation for the acquisition protocol to activate those cells um and to differentiate uh, the 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 contribution from codes uh, cones rods and, and uh, the retinal ganglion cells intrinsic, intrinsically photosensitive but we see that probably the red background light can be a way to reach that difference of a response between blue and red stimuli so for for, for future work we want to increase the sampling we want to continue validating this protocol in healthy individuals. And the final stage would be to validate the system in patients with neuroophthalmological diseases so that we can prove that it is possible to have here the screening tool. And just acknowledge the hospital where, I'm, where I've been working and thank you for your time. Thank you very much for your presentation. Thank you very much. For those questions from audience. I have one. What uh, would okay. be the accuracy of a system compared with, uh, yeah, so, with a dedicated syst medical system? Okay, so as you can see, we still have a really low uh, samples, so we need to increase the samples to be able to do a proper statistical comparison we, uh, comparing with the traditional pupillometers. Um, but one thing that it's important to refer once more, I think I referred it, but I'm going to tell it again. Um, the existing pupillometers do things a, a bit different, uh, so they do it in the dark. Um, yes. And they only apply the stimuli there because they are using near infrared cameras. And as we are doing it in light conditions, um, the comparison is a bit different because we are varying a, a big thing. <laughs> so for now, we just want to try to prove that we are able to to affect to to uh, sorry to activate those kind of cells, and then we will be able to compare results. So for now, I cannot give you a proper answer to that because I'm still uh, gathering more more samples to have a statistics to be able to to compare with them. Okay, thank you. Good luck. Was... 